Lawmakers are hearing from key regulators today on the state of the U.S. banking system. The banking committee is holding its first formal hearing on the collapse of several banks earlier this month. The Fed's vice chair for supervision said that Silicon Valley Bank's management is largely to blame for the bank's failure. The chair of the panel, Senator Sherrod Brown, had similar harsh words for the banks. Some explanations will focus on complicated sounding concepts like balance sheet, balance risk, and moral hazard, and stress tests, and liquidity set, liquidity ratios. Really, though, it comes down to more basic concepts, hubris, entitlement, greed, and always, always, always with big paydays at the end at the, for the executives at the top. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane joins us now with more on this. Boy, he said it right there, the senator saying this is all about greed, just greedy bankers. What else did witnesses have to say about, uh, about during this hearing about who truly is responsible for SVB's collapse and this almost uh, uncertainty um, for regional banks in general? Errol, there seems to be a consensus here on the Hill and among the regulators that there was a failure of management of this bank, allowing too many risks to be taken in too short a period of time. There is this unequivocal message trying to be communicated by regulators that the U.S. banking system is sound, that your money is safe, that there should not be and will not be a bank run in the future. But there's also this sentiment that the collapse of one bank, Silicon Valley Bank, caused way too much damage, too much, risk, too much risk of contagion, and required a federal intervention in short order. And that is not sustainable, and that should not be repeatable. So we're at this moment, Errol and Lilia, where there's going to be this nearly partisan line divide over whether mm. regulators need to change their action or legislation is needed to reinstitute some of the rules and restrictions and regulations that were pulled back five years ago. That's where this hearing has been headed today. That's the trajectory of the debate. But there's also no sense that this Congress can muster the political capital to pass new sweeping bank regulations. You know, Scott, when you say failure of management and that there's consensus around that, sure. But also, I mean, it's hard to ignore uh, the power of, of lobbying and the systemic issues that allowed for this to happen. How harsh were members of Congress on these regulators for allowing this to happen under their watch? Ultimately, Congress is going to take a hit for this. The federal government is going to take a hit for this because the federal government had to move so swiftly to interject itself and to stop contagion from hitting the banking industry. There's always going to be a political fallout to when the government moves fast to help big banks or big business and doesn't move as swiftly to help everybody else with mm -hmm. their financial issues. So there's a political price to be paid. And at this moment, as they debate this, as they have hearings about this, there's going to be a redirection of blame. All that being said, this is day one of two in which banking officials will be questioned by Congress for what went wrong, how things got into such a precarious situation. And you can hear some of the blame from the top Republican on this Senate Banking Committee, Tim Scott of South Carolina. Take a listen. For the last two and a half weeks, the regulators have consistently described Silicon Valley as unique and highly idiosyncratic, meaning the warning signs should have been flashing red and SVB should have stood out as what it was. Absolutely a problem child. Clear as a bill were the warning signs. A few big takeaways from the banking regulators who testified here today. First of all, there is an internal review of their performance. They'll wait for the results to come in before they decide on whether to change things, they say. There is a capability to claw back any bonuses some of these bank executives took before their banks failed, but also that there is a stability to the community and small banking community in America, to the small banking industry, which is so critical for so many reasons. Many areas have only small community banks to choose from, and it's small community banks that generate about 60% of the U.S. small business loans in America. So that system is integral, and according to the regulators, it is steady. Scott McFarland, thank you. Thanks, Scott.